station. This is, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. How about us? We hear you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hi, my name is Dr. Deborah Taylor Long, and I am board chairwoman for the Gifford Youth Achievement Center, also known as GYAC. We are grateful for this extraordinary opportunity to speak with astronauts at the International Space Station. Now, here's our first question. Hi, my name is Ada Robinson. My question is, what type of food do you eat while in space? Hey, that is a, uh, that's a great question, and it's one of the unique things that we have to get used to while we're up here, because our food has to be packaged differently than it is on the ground. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, right here I have a, uh, it's a container of uh, pasta and turkey in here, so kind of like a spaghetti noodle uh, type of thing. And so you can see it is, uh, Jessica's going to bring it up to the camera, but it is, uh, it is hard. It's had all the water moved out of it. And so if she like knocks on it, it's hard like a brick. Uh, and then what we have to do is we go up to a special machine that injects water into the straw, uh, the straw end of it. And, uh, and then we mix it up and we let it sit for a few minutes and then it's just like, uh, just like eating it back home. Um, but all of, our, uh, all of our food has to be contained in little bags like this. Uh, otherwise it starts floating away and it's hard to control. So uh, no, no plates for us up here, just, uh, just eating out of bags. And uh, really the only utensil we use is a spoon. Uh, so we carry around a spoon and then bags of food. Hi, my name is Chester Bracely. My question is, can you hear any sounds in space? Yeah, so it's a good question. And um, certainly when we're up here on the International Space Station, um, we hear lots of sounds. Um, it's actually quite noisy um, on the ISS with all of the different machines running, all of the science experiments that are going on. Um, it, it all kind of creates a, a pretty loud background noise that we kind of hear all the time. Um, but we can kind of tune that out so that um, we can hear the other sound that we hear a lot of, which is the ground. Um, so we have speakers in each one of the uh, modules on the ISS and um, that is how we talk to the ground teams that help tell us um, what to do and, and where to find the things we're looking for. So we're um, super grateful for, for the huge team of people that help keep ISS operating. Hi, my name is Christian Ashley and my question is how do you sleep in the space station? Sleeping in the space station took a lot of getting used to, uh, at least for me. Uh, so we have sleeping bags. Uh, they're uh, blue sleeping bags, and we have a small little crew quarters that's like a, a little closet, like you can see on the screen here. Uh, and the, uh, the sleeping bag we, it has little armholes in it, and we can tuck ourselves in there. And uh, some of us like to free float uh, inside our, our crew quarters, uh, and others uh, strap it to the wall uh, so that we're kind of secured in one spot there. Uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty cozy, keeps you pretty warm, and uh, you know, after a couple weeks of getting used to it, it's, uh, you can sleep really, really well. Hi, my name is Adriana Cortez. My question is, how do plants grow in space? Well, that's a, that's a great question, and it is something that we're spending a lot of our time and energy on right now. Uh, once, uh, you know, as NASA starts to pivot towards going to the moon and eventually to Mars, uh, plants and growing plants is going to be a big part of that capability to provide not only food, but be part of the life support system, uh, you know, producing oxygen. Uh, we are doing an experiment right now, uh, just to, just behind the camera, called X Roots, uh, which is experimenting on different ways to provide water to plants. As you know, there's no gravity in space, and so you can't just pour water on the plants. And uh, we've learned that plants uh, don't necessarily need gravity to know which way to grow, uh, but they do grow their roots towards the water.
water supply. Uh, and last year we grew some uh, you know chili peppers, uh, which apparently were really really hot. Uh, we've had some of our colleagues that got to taste test those things. Uh, Jessica and I and the rest of our crew have gotten to grow some lettuce and some radishes over the last few days. And um, you know it's uh, it's really exciting to see those things. We got other living organisms up here, so it's really fun to be able to take care of those uh, and and watch those things grow and you know practice getting our green thumb. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kayla Baker. My question is, what equipment do you use to breathe in space? So inside, inside the International Space Station, um, we have a, an environment where we have uh, just the right amount of oxygen um, and nitrogen for us to breathe. Uh, so on inside the ISS, um, we have a, a, a very Earth-like environment. Of course, outside the ISS, um, out in space, is a very different story. And so when we go out on our spacewalks or our extravehicular activities, uh, we have our spacesuits. Um, that we wear, the, the big white puffy suits. And the, the backpack on the back of those suits contains the life support system for us, which basically means it contains the oxygen that we have to breathe, as well as the mechanism for scrubbing out the CO2 that we breathe to uh, enable us to have um, the right amount of environment and air to breathe while we're out on a spacewalk. Um, so there's enough in there for us to be outside for around seven hours or so. Um, to get a lot of work done while we're out there. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Harris. My question is, how do you drink water in space? That is a great question, and it's one of the things that we can have the most fun with uh, up here because water behaves very differently uh, in space. Instead of going to the bottom of a container, it'll just float uh, inside the container. And so uh, a typical water bottle doesn't work quite as well uh, up here because the, uh, it's hard to get the air away from the, uh, the part that you want to drink water out of. Uh, you can spin it, and it'll separate, and so the water tends to go to both sides of it. Uh, but water bottles are kind of uh, kind of difficult. So what we have mostly up here are uh, drink pouches, and so we get a whole a whole bunch of these. Sometimes they're juice. Uh, some we have coffee and different things like that. This one is just water, uh, and we put a straw into it. We put it into the uh, we plug it into the same machine that we do the food, and it fills it up with water, and then uh, we can squirt our water out like so. And so it's kind of fun. You can get these bubbles that are just floating around up here and, uh, and, and play with them. But they can also make a big mess. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, uh, it's really unique. You can see the water just forms a, a perfect sphere up here and uh, we'll float around until we drink it. Hi, my name is Kendall Mullen. My question is, how was the docking at the space station? Yeah, it was really neat um, getting to dock to the space station. Um, as we were coming in on our SpaceX Crew Dragon, um, which we've named Freedom, um, as we were approaching the ISS, it was really neat to see the ISS in the blackness of space, just nothing out there. Um, and the ISS appeared as a super, super small um, gold kind of imprint on the, the on the back of the, the night sky. And to know that that was our destination, that was going to be our home for the next several months, um, to be able to kind of see it appear a little bit out of nowhere um, was just amazing. And then to, of course, get closer and closer to it um, and uh, slowly approach and then have a successful dock um, was just awesome. And then to get to come onto Space Station and greet all of our friends um, from Crew 3 and Expedition um, 66 and 67. Uh, it was just a, an awesome um, memory to be able to, to embrace them when we arrived. Hi, my name is Caitlin Pound, and my question is, why do astronauts stream underwater?
Well, that's a good question. We um, we train in the water uh, and underwater specifically uh, to get as close as we can to simulate weightlessness, especially for uh, for long periods of time. So to practice for spacewalking, um, we have a gigantic swimming pool that has a full-size mock-up of the International Space Station in it. And uh, we get in uh, in the spacesuits, and we go down there, and we'll be in those uh, suits for you know six and a half or seven hours uh, for each training event. And uh, it, it, we're, the divers that, uh, that are out there assisting us help us get weighed out so that we're neutrally buoyant, so we don't float to the top and we don't sink to the bottom. Uh, and that simulates weightlessness as close as we can get uh, on Earth. And it allows us to practice all the intricate tasks and teamwork that we have to do uh, when we go out the door for a spacewalk. Hi, my name is Landon Cheney, and my question to you is how is food delivered to the space station? We are super lucky up here um, that we have cargo vehicles, so uh, spacecraft that come up and deliver supplies and hardware, science, and also food. Um, and so it will. It, the next one coming up will be um, SpaceX Dragon uh, 25. Um, that will be coming up in the next um, couple of weeks here, um, bringing um, lots of things, including including food. Um, so we are super grateful for that um, opportunity and that um, capability to, to bring us food. And in, in addition to kind of our standard menu of food, like the, the uh, turkey that, that um, Bob was showing you earlier, um, sometimes these cargo vehicles also bring us treats. Um, sometimes they are allowed to um, load at the last minute um, some fresh foods, so some things like um, fruits um, or even ice cream um, that we might, hopefully, we've got our fingers <laughs> crossed, um, that, that we might be able to get some um, on our car next cargo vehicle. Hi, my name is Ria Coco. My question is, what are the job duties you have in space? Well, one of the uh, really fun things about being up here is that uh, no day is the same. We uh, take part in so many different tasks and uh, perform so many different science experiments uh, that there's just so many different things uh, to do. Uh, some of it is uh, maintaining the space station and fixing things. Uh, the space station is, you know, 20 years, a little over 20 years old now. Uh, so just like a 20-year-old house, it has things that need taken care of and modernized and uh, and repaired. Uh, and so we do things like that. Uh, and then uh, also uh, upgrading things and making uh, and installing new software and new uh, new hardware uh, on the space station. And then, of course, at any given time, there can be 250 to 300 different experiments on board. And uh, and so we are end up being um, the the people that run those experiments, and uh, sometimes we're taking part in those experiments ourselves uh, as part of the human research program. So uh, we you know take part in different things that look at how the human body responds to being in space for an extended period of time. So uh, any given day, we can be a, uh, a repair technician, we can be a scientist, uh, you name it. And, and we touch all different forms of science uh, out there, from materials science and developing new ways to uh, form different materials, all the way to medical science uh, and, and geology as well. So uh, the, uh, the, there's, the opportunities are endless. There's just so many different things that we get to do up here. Hi, my name is Jamar Alston. My question is, how hard is it to move around inside the space station? So if you were to ask us that question when we first got here, the first the first week or so, um, our answer would definitely be that it is pretty tough. Um, but with time, um, just like with anything, uh, we have definitely adapted and, and learned how to use all three different planes, the whole volume, um, and learned how to, to float effectively. So we use all of our these handrails um, that you can maybe see um, to kind of hook our feet onto, as well as our hands, and kind of Spider-Man our way through station. Um, so it is it's super fun to learn how to move in microgravity. Hello, my name is Lenore Carter. My question is, when you're exiting the Earth's atmosphere, do you feel heat?
That's a good question. On the, on the way uphill uh, during launch, uh, we don't really feel too much heat. And um, part of that is because our vehicle is starting out very slow and gradually accelerating as we get higher and higher. Um, plus, we have the vehicle around us. So in our seats, uh, we have uh, very good air conditioning. Uh, we're protected by our suits. And so uh, we get to just enjoy the ride and the incredible acceleration that the, uh, that the rocket provides. Uh, and it was just such an amazing experience, uh, feeling the rumble and the thrust and the acceleration as you're getting pushed back into the seat uh, was just absolutely phenomenal. And then at an instant, the engines shut off and you're, you go from feeling five Gs of force on your body to instantly being weightless. And it was absolutely spectacular. Uh, we'll let you know in a couple months on our way home uh, whether we feel the heat on the way home. Uh, but our, uh, our vehicle is protected by a uh, high-tech uh, heat shield uh, so that as we're, you know, we're starting out at 17,500 miles an hour, and as we start interfacing with the atmosphere, it starts to heat up and produce a plasma, and that friction is what slows down the capsule before we deploy our parachutes. So uh, that heat shield is super, super important, and uh, we're really thankful for the folks at SpaceX that have developed it, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know if we feel anything on the way home, but uh, we're pretty sure that uh, that the uh, vehicle does a great job and we'll be as, uh, as cozy as a cucumber on the way home. Hi, my name is Kaden Taylor. My question is, what is the best thing about living in zero gravity? I would say the best thing about living in microgravity is exactly what Bob is doing, learning to, getting to do flips with very little effort. <laughs> Hi, my name is Melania Warner. My question is, how long does it take to get in and out of your spacesuit? That's a good question. We have uh, we have two different spacesuits uh, that we that we wear. One was our uh, our uh, SpaceX spacesuit that we wear on the way up and on the way back down to Earth. Uh, that one um, takes I don't know maybe two or three minutes or so for us to climb into, and then once we get zipped up into it, it's a uh, it's a very comfortable uh, suit that's uh, that's all one piece. Uh, if we're doing a spacewalk, uh, that takes a little bit more time. Uh, getting into the suit itself uh, has, you know, we have pants that we put on first, and then we climb into the uh, the upper torso, and then we got to put the helmet on. And then part of the entire process that really takes a long time is the uh, the pre-breathing. So when we go out the door, we're using, breathing 100% oxygen, and the pressure is very very low. And so there's a little, you know, typically there's a little bit of nitrogen in, that our body carries around in the blood. And and we need to make sure that we breathe all of that out. And so that is that takes a really long time. So uh, a lot of our process before going out the doors is, is to manage that. Uh, so all in all, it takes you know it takes a couple hours to get that whole situation suited up, uh, and then put us in the airlock uh, and suck the air out before we can actually open the door and go outside. Hi, my name is Braden Hart. My question is, what do you do during your time off in space? Yeah, we definitely enjoy the, the time off that we do get. Um, one thing that we really enjoy doing together as a crew is um, getting together and having dinner together. Um, so we have a table um, in node one um, where we have lots of Velcro and, and um, gray tape that we can um, stick things onto and, and enjoy our meals. And so we like to crowd around um, the table, all seven of us, um, and enjoy meals together, break bread and, and just um, laugh and have good conversations conversation. Uh, so we definitely enjoy doing that as a crew. We also are super lucky that um, we have access to um, entertainment. Um, we can also um, call our family and friends on the ground, um, which is super important to us to be able to stay connected um, to the ground while we're up here. So we have lots of different um, means of doing that. And then, of course, one of our favorite activities is to look out the window, um, being able to look down at the earth from this unique perspective perspective um, is just we could spend all day doing that. Hi, my name is Angela Perry and I'm the executive director of GYAC. We want to thank NASA and our community partners for making this vision a reality for our students. Thanks for tuning in to see GYAC go out of this world.
Well, thank you so much. It was an honor and a pleasure to get to talk with all of you. Uh, you guys had some great questions, uh, made, it, made us think a little bit, and we really appreciate the time. Good luck to all of you, and have a, uh, have a great summer. Goodbye from the International Space Station. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.